Okay, there we go. And are you going to start this one, Sierra? No, you start it. Okay. <laughs> um, and Katie, how, how do you pronounce your last name? Cheetah, like the cat. Cheetah, oh, okay. really? I mm -hmm. like that. It. <laughs> I always say Tashita in my head, but uh -huh. Cheetah yes, is so much cooler. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, record. One, two, three. Perfect. That's, and that's how we do it. <laughs> that's In that way. Showbiz. Okay. <gasps> Welcome back to another episode of the In Raw Life podcast. We are so excited to have you here this week because we have another beautiful guest on the podcast this week. Her name is Katie Cheetah. Yes, Cheetah, which is like the coolest name ever. Um, <laughs> and she is a, an entrepreneur. And she is also one, has been one of our students in our program, Most Awesome Month of Your Life. So she is one of our most awesome women in our life. Um, so we're super excited to get to have her on here today and just kind of pick her brain on how she started, what she's doing in life, and how she does it. Mm. Yeah, Katie, we're I, excited to have you. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I have really enjoyed following along with you um, and learning and being part of your course. Um, definitely, like today, it made it super, um, super easy. Uh, I had a kind of hectic morning. I had it all planned out, and then things kind of changed, but I was able to go with the flow. So, oh yeah, I love hearing that. Oh, <laughs> me too. It makes my heart happy. So true though. We have these plans, and then like sometimes they just don't work. <laughs> that I think in the group. I don't know if you saw the video yesterday, but in the group I go live every Monday at ten, and as soon as I went to hit live, my son yelled, "Mama, I wiped myself." To which I was like, nope, nope, we are changing plans now. <laughs> I cannot let him walk around having wiped himself. <laughs> so I came late. <laughs> but life happens and you have to like, if you go with the flow, it makes your day so much nicer than if, <laughs> than if you let it stress you out. Yeah, but when you have those like tools built up already to know how to successfully go with the flow, I would say, <laughs> is what really helps. Yeah, um, it does. So, Katie, tell us a little bit about like what your story, like who you are, where you're coming from, your own business, the the fact that you're a mama. Like, give us a little snapshot of who you are. Okay, well, um, I've been born and raised in Texas. I still live in Texas. Um, it's been kind of a hard state to get out of. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Growing up, as soon as I graduated high school, I joined the military, did that, and I knew that I wanted to eventually get married and have be a stay-at-home mom and have kids, um, which I have three wonderful ones. They drive me insane sometimes, but, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but it's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a really crazy kind of ride in parenthood, and then... I decided to something that I always kind of wanted to do was be a virtual assistant since about 2010. Um, it just kind of I would look into it, but at that time it wasn't really a widely known or widely used uh, position. And the ones that I did find that were looking to uh, looking for those kind of people, they wanted, you know, two to two to three years of experience and administration. And I'm like, well, I don't have that. I, I grew up on a farm. I, um, you know, work my work, work my hands. And then I joined the military and I went with that. I wasn't administrator. I was actually a laundry specialist. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and pretty much what I knew was just how to work hard and get things done. So I really didn't know the set behind a desk type position. Um, I didn't go to school for it. I went to school for uh, 
law enforcement. And when that didn't work out, I wanted to go into um, computers, which I'm still continuing that career of going into computers. I'm actually working on a course right now for it. And but it just took time and I finally ended up here where uh, when things well, right before everything shut down and before the whole 2020 deal, I was like, I'm going to start a virtual assistant business. And there happened to be a lady that was teaching a course that lived in the uh, in the city that I live in. And I was like, cool, she's right here. You know, I can learn from her. And then all that, then everything happened to where everybody, everything was shut down. Nobody could do anything, but I still, everything went online. So I learned online and I've enjoyed it. That's awesome. I, I feel like there are so many stories where like people took this risk right before everything shut down and it was like just the perfect timing to do mm-hmm. things. That's so cool. So are you finding that like, I, I guess you're a self-taught virtual assistant then. Mm -hmm. And are you finding that it's easy? It's difficult? Like what, where are you at in that journey? Um, so I've been at it almost two years now and the, the beginning of it was hard because getting myself out there, because I wasn't very, you know, very active on social media or anything like that. So putting myself out there was really hard. Um, I'm still kind of reserved at it, and um, and then of course I ended up with a few health issues that really uh, just kind of affected my overall well-being. They weren't anything serious, but it was just enough to bring me down, be tired, not sure what's going on, <clears throat> and um, so I was working through them. I took last month off, which was great. Uh, it allowed me to focus on myself. It allowed me to learn and implement uh, actions from your course. And um, I'm coming back out of it. I'm coming out swinging this month and uh, hopefully I'll get back on on track and start taking care of things again. And you also, like while you're doing all this, you also homeschool your kids, right? Yeah. Yes, my oldest, she's uh, five and a half. She does go to a, kind of a homeschooling co-op type session on Wednesdays all day, which is kind of a break, but I also help out there. So Mm -hmm. my day's um, busy with that too. And then you have two younger than that, right? Yes. Yeah. A four-year-old and a two-year-old. Gotcha. Yeah. So you're definitely busy. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) You got a lot going on. So, so with, um, you said you took like the last month off. Did you just completely take the month off from working with your clients? Are you like like starting back up with them? Are you finding new clients now? What's your, what does that look um, like for you? The end of January uh, was a was when my last client that I had that I was working full time with, um, they decided to go a different direction because they, they needed to get someone in person. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't have anybody last month. So now I'm pretty much starting over, um, bringing on new clients, working on finding and promoting myself again. So I, I feel like I'm kind of in a way starting back over, but with everything that I've done over the last two years, it's a lot easier to get back into the groove of getting back out there and be like, okay, I'm ready to work. You know, who needs my help? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of our other interviews from this month. She had the same thing like a while ago. She just knew she needed to take a break and doing that helped give her more momentum and more steam going forward. Cause sometimes we just need that. We need to take mm-hmm. time to ourselves to reset and recalibrate. So and you kind of get that clarity on, okay, who do I want to be? Who do I want to show up as? And who do I want to work with going forward? You have like right. that, that momentum of, I can do this. Yeah. Yes. So what would you say in like running your own business and taking that leap as an entrepreneur, what would you say has been your biggest challenge so far? Uh, Getting it going, Um, getting people to know that I'm here and what I do and how I can help them are, you know, and even having the, uh, 
having others that I can refer them to, you know, having other referral partners that I can refer them to and be like, hey, I don't quite do that, but I know somebody who is absolutely wonderful and can. Uh, so networking, getting out there. That's probably been the biggest challenge is being out there. It's like, OK, I'm on a call and I got to tell them who I am and what I do. And it's just I'm not a public speaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've gotten better at it. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm super glad that you're willing to be on a podcast. I feel like uh -huh. that, is, that can be nerve wracking. So thank you for being willing to talk to us today. Yeah, um, so I, I was wondering, um, slightly like taking one step back. So you said that you like grew up on a farm and went into the military and like you've just been like a hands on, like, you know, kind of worker. And then now you decided to do virtual assistant, like, you know, you decided a while ago, but then you're doing it. Like, what? What finally pushed, like, what was that something in you that said, hey, you should do this, and then that actually helped you take the action to do it? Um, well, I still wanted to be home with my kids. Uh, I still wanted to be part of that. So I didn't want to have to go in and work in an office setting or work, you know, retail or something like that that I've done in the past. And so I wanted to be with my kids. And then the fact that with everything that was going on and the businesses that were, you know, being closed down and uh, my husband works in the oil field. So with that uncertainty coming up of, well, I don't know, is he going to have a job? And with everything shut down, we'd be able to find another job. So that was another thing that I, that was a real push of, well, we need, well, we, we're not going to be hurting for a while, but if, you know, things don't start opening back up and, we, you know, we have to go for something that's a little bit less. We need something to kind of fill in the gap. Um, so. Cool. So now you've been doing it for about two years mm -hmm. and then just starting in January, you started the most awesome month of your life. So how has that affected the way that you like show up for your business? Uh, I now have a pretty much dedicated time or I, I don't feel one of the things that's really helped me with this is I don't feel like whenever I get up in the morning I have to be right there on my business you know checking emails mm -hmm. make it you know see if somebody responded or um such as when I was working with the one client I, I helped with their emails and their communication and things so I didn't feel like I needed to jump up right away and get right on there and not spend time taking care of myself and then taking care of my kiddos and making sure they were all set up for the day. And instead of being like, oh, just a minute, just a minute, I'll, I'll help you in a minute, but I got to, you know, focus on that. So that's one thing that's really helped out a lot. Um, and I think that's just my, when I, when I get focused on something, it's really hard for me to back out of it and be like, Nothing's nobody's you know in the in, in the email world nobody's gonna die <laughs> if I don't get this email read and answered or something like that you know it's it's nothing bad's gonna happen the world's not gonna explode if I don't do it right this second it, it can wait 15 minutes for me to do what I need to do mm -hmm. so oh, that oh, mindset yeah. change is so huge and I mean I've I've gone on that journey in the past too. And it's so funny because I find myself saying the same thing sometimes with email stuff or whatever it is. I'm like, no, you don't have to go check that. Like it's, it's all going to be okay. Like it's not life threatening situation. <laughs> yeah. It, it'll still be there. Yeah. It'll okay. still be there. It'll be waiting on you and you can answer it. They understand because they, you know, maybe they're in the same boat too. Um, so yeah, and of course, my time. my oldest one. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. You oh, I was going to say my oldest one. She, <laughs> yeah, my oldest one. She, uh, she's like, oh, hey, you know, she has this video game that she got for Christmas. So now it's like first thing in the morning we get up, we do our do our whatever we need to get done, and then she's like, you can you play a video game? So I'll play one video game with her, and it, it makes her day. Yeah. So. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It's so true. Jess and I talk about all the time how like just spending 15 minutes with your kids can make them super happy. Like just that's all they need. And then they move on to the next thing and you're like, all right, I'm going to go back to work now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but yeah, and of um, course they're they're always the ones that are. Oh, as soon as you start something, it's like they need fifteen million things, and you're going. But I just wait. Uh, okay, I can take a break. Go go help you. <laughs> so true. I definitely that I used to be the same way, and sometimes I still find myself getting stuck into it. Like, oh. I really want to get to that email and it's just a matter of like taking a deep breath and giving yourself that reminder that like this is not as important as these little tiny babies in front of me like that can be handled at any point today and their little desires or whatever are right now and bleeding (laughs) do you feel like you have more like clarity around yes i can take this like random break to do something with you or for you or actually I can't right now, but we can do this, you know, in 10 minutes or whatever. I do. Of course, I still, you know, I'm still battling the whole, um, you know, making it work of saying, yes, I can do this. It's okay to do it. Um, You know, giving myself permission. Mm -hmm. It's still a work in progress, but it's definitely a whole lot better of like yes I can do that or no just give me five more minutes and as soon as I get this done because I'm right in the middle of it my brain's working on it (laughs) type thing awesome yeah what would you say like with the way that your morning routine is set up now like has that given you can you like describe what that's done for you or how it's helped uh, I'm still working on it, uh, for the most part, but it has gotten so much better. Uh, I'm still trying to get up before the kiddos, just due to the fact that whenever they're awake, it, it seems like I don't get to uh, really kind of fill my cup or start to fill my cup up for the morning, um, because I'm tending to them, and then then finally I'm like, oh, I got, I need to go do this for myself. And by the time I get that done, most of the day started and I'm going, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it is getting better. I still, you know, I'm finding myself taking time to do things for myself in the morning and to be like, you know, to put a, put them on pause and be like, okay, guys, I need to just have five minutes for myself. Just let me get this going and then I'll be more focused and able to do what I need to do with you guys. So Mm -hmm. it it has changed um, quite a bit of where once I take care of myself, I tend to be more present with them and whatever else needs to be done. I love hearing that. That's awesome. And I mean, I think we all have those days where we don't get up before the kids. It's, you you know, those days you're like, oh man, yeah, should have got up 15 minutes earlier. But like, <laughs> it happens to all of us. Like sometimes you just want to sleep oh, yeah. in and you pay for it, but whatever. <laughs> so. Well, and then, I mean, the ages factor in too. Like I have a nine-year-old now who is able to get herself going in the morning, but usually doesn't, but doesn't like, you know, need me to help her do things. Mm-hmm. Like. So there's, there's a difference in like the seasons of their ages where you kind of figure out what works. And I mean, I think both Sierra and I, it took us a long time to kind of figure out what works for us in the morning. And then when it starts to feel like it's not working again, that's when I'm like, okay, what am I doing? What do I need to reconfigure? And I'm like, oh, this is what I can do and where I can move things around. And then it feels better again. So Mm -hmm. it takes time and then always kind of shifting. I definitely, yeah, I feel like it's a work in progress. I mean, because we're, you know, you kind of like lose some of your habits or you're not thinking about it as much and they slip away and you're like, wait a second, what? Like, like my gratitude, I say gratitude throughout the day, but like saying it in the morning makes such a big difference. And sometimes I forget to do it first thing. And yet, like when I do it first thing in the morning, oh, it sets my day up so much better than if like in addition to throughout the day. So, but yeah, you just have to recalibrate and be like, what's missing here? Where am I at? Well, okay. For me, it's more of like habits don't go away. It's wait, this stru- like this order of things is now like with whatever is new in my life isn't working. So I need to like mm. re puzzle it where it goes that it's gonna feel best. And mm. that happens. That's just life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is our very different ways. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sure. The difference between us. Oh man. Um Okay, so 
what is your favorite part about being your own boss and having your own business? Um, not having to ask for time off, not being like, <laughs> I, I need to take today off or, you know, um, sure, I'll still let the client know that I need time, but uh, for the most part, it's, you know, it's make your own schedule, work when you want to. If you want to work on the weekends, sure, you can do whatever you need to do on the weekends, but you're not forced to do it. Or if you just want to have a three day, four day weekend uh, during a holiday or something, you can do it. Um, that's one thing that I've uh, really enjoy about it is I don't I have to kind of say mother may I to a, <laughs> to a, a manager or something. Yeah. So I remember like when we first started chatting with you um, and you were thinking about doing the program, one of your big goals uh, with being your own boss was that you want that freedom to like go adventure randomly or, you know, do stuff with your kids randomly or by yourself or whatever it is. Do you feel like, I don't know if you've been able to do that yet, but have, do you feel like it's, it feels more possible? I do. Um, we did, while well, I haven't gotten to do quite what I was thinking of the, mm -hmm. the adventure type, um, I think it was not last week because last week's weather wasn't great, but the week before, um, I, I just was like, come on, kids, let's go to the park. I mean, it was just a, I don't have anything planned today. Most of my stuff's done. Whatever I need to do can be done in a short, you know, 30 minutes to an hour after we get back. And I took them to the park, played with them, and it, it was it was great just being able to be like, hey, you know what? I don't have much to do. Not much is on my plate. Let's go. Let's just go do something. That's awesome. So. Does it feel like that's something that didn't feel possible before? Kind of. Um, I mean, whenever I was just the before I transitioned to being a virtual assistant, I had a kind of felt like I had a little bit more freedom as a, just a stay at home mom, but still uh, a little restricted. Um, and then once I started my business, it kind of felt restricting because I was trying to you know promote myself, get myself out there and show and do networking calls and things and now that it's a little bit easier I'm like oh I can do oh yeah I can do this networking call that's not a problem then after that I can go do something with the kids it, it it's definitely different so you can kind of see that like unicorn space that I talk about a lot like oh <laughs> here's this magical I don't have anything planned space where I can go do something fun with my kids or for myself or whatever it is or do nothing Yes, and another thing that I'm learning is I don't have to have my schedule jam packed of where, you know, it's like have a call at this time and then a 30 minute break and another call or in something like that. So I've definitely adjusted my times um, of when people can schedule times to talk with me. Mm -hmm. um, and I made sure to give myself time where as if they if I have a couple of calls that day, I just I, I can take the kids to the park where I'm out, come home, do the calls while they're you know, being busy or sleeping or whatever they need to do. That's awesome. Um, okay, so one question that we ask each one of our guests is what's the moment you're willing to share? Uh, so that's the, oh, sorry, it was giving me, ah, a little bit, I think. I lost my, my head piece, my earphone fell out, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so the reason we ask this is because, did you hear my, what my question was or did it fall out before that the, it fell out in the middle of your question okay. yeah I, I'll start I don't know if I was hearing anything okay um okay so one of the questions we ask all of our guests is what is the rawest moment you're willing to share so um the reason we ask this is just to show that like we are all humans we all go through really tough times um and that like no one is alone in their hardship so it doesn't, you don't have to air all of your dirty laundry, but if you have any moment in your life, like business related or life related that you can share that will just help like any other woman out there listening know, hey, wow, I'm not alone. Um, we would love to hear that. Do you have a moment you could share with us? I do. Um, it goes back, it, definitely before I really had any common sense, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, or at least what I feel like I, I didn't have any common sense back then. But um, 
back whenever I was on my deployment in Iraq from 08, 09, I got, it, it was a really tough time because not so much of the fact that I was deployed um, or where I was at, but it was the fact that when we got split up into our groups and our assignments for which, you know, camp we were going to or FOB that we were going to, um, I was supposed to have a couple of people from my unit there. Well, then it ended up that they had to go elsewhere to help add people to a different camp. And so it left me there uh, as the only person from Texas um, with the group. And sometimes I felt you know, singled out or that if things happen, you know, I was the one that got the blame because the other people were all tight knit. They worked together. They, you know, they pretty much from the time that they got to their unit, they were together and they knew each other. And here I was just some person from Texas there on deployment with them. And so it got to be really rough because um, probably oh, a couple months before we came home, felt like every time I turned around, I was being singled out. Oh, you didn't do this or oh, you didn't do that. Um, and so I, I was getting in trouble, which got my battle buddy in trouble. And she didn't like that because, you know, that was her group. But every time, you know, it's like, well, it, whatever my punishment was, she had to be part of it because she was my battle buddy. And we didn't get along <laughs> with the start with. And so it made it really rough on her. And but once our... Um, sergeant left or a uh, squad sergeant left uh, for his r and r things got a whole bunch e a whole bunch easier we we got to do what we want and i didn't get in trouble as much um which i wasn't i i know i just wanted to get through the deployment and make it back home and so uh during that time i got really down on myself i didn't want to go to the i pretty much just secluded myself so that whatever it was that happened that i wasn't part of they couldn't say i was there because i wasn't there i mean it's so it, it's like we go to work and do the tasks that we need to do and then we come back and i would just stay in what they called the chew at the time uh, our living quarters and they were like, well, do you want to go here? Or, you know, well, we need to go to the gym. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll go to the gym with you, but that's about it. And so it got to the point, I think, like three days, I didn't want to go to the dining hall. And um, I had some people, some other people I was talking with from a different unit and company. They're like, they found out about it. So they were bringing me food, knocking on my door and leaving food for me. And I was like, I got to the point where I didn't care if a mortar hit right where I was standing or not. And I worked through it. The other, the other people helped me. And then things got better once the sergeant went on his R&R. &R. And um, then, then we got, when he got back, we were transitioning and going with our, the whole company. We were getting together with the whole company to get ready to come home. And so I got to be back around the people that were from my unit. And um, then they kind of, it, it was more where he couldn't single me out for anything. It was like, you know, if something came up, everybody was there, including, you know, my sergeants, my, my other, you know, my other comrades that were there. And they were just so sort of like, he couldn't pinpoint me, but like, well, she did that. I'm like, no, she didn't. She was over here with us doing whatever. So that that's probably my toughest moment in life of where it just got to the point where I didn't care. And, mm -hmm. but I made it through it. I, it, to be honest, I enjoyed it. And I kind of wish that I would have done another one because there was another one coming up and I was uh, asked to participate. And I was like, no, I don't think you're crazy. I don't want to go back over there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Man, like that just covers so much, like being bullied, wanting to like, being at the end of your rope. I think like we've all been mm -hmm. in some form of that before and it feels like you're the only person that is struggling with that. And I know like I've been there where it's just like, I don't care what happens. Like if this car crashes, mm -hmm. whatever, like it's, it's the worst, you're, what's wrong with me? Why am I thinking this? But at the same time, you're like, the pain has to end somehow, right? So, oh, so yeah, and it, 
Oh, yeah. And sometimes people are like, well, were you suicidal? I'm like, no, I wasn't suicidal. Mm-hmm. I was more of, okay. I don't care if something happens, you know. Mm-hmm. And that, that it, that's a thing around the military, too. It's like, well, you were suicidal. No, I wasn't. <laughs> there's, a, there's a difference <laughs> between yeah. that. I did not want, you know, I did not want to die. But I just got to the point where I didn't care if I did or not because it was miserable. Yeah. Well, to lighten it up, Jessica has a lightning round for us. Get us to a lighter space. Very lightning, because I didn't even come up with questions today. So this will be very fun. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Are you ready, Katie? Yes. Lightning. Are you ready, Jessica? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> what? is your favorite like software or app to use for work like what's the coolest thing Mm. gee i don't know (laughs) um something i use for work well i'm i'm on instagram a lot but i wouldn't say it's my favorite one um for designing and stuff, I like Canva um, to mm-hmm. design my posts and stuff. And um, let's see, I'm trying to think of all the things they use because they're through different clients. There's all different things you learn because one, you know, one uses Microsoft or one uses all Google or one has, you know, something new, uh, some new CRM because I learned about a new uh, CRM that I had no clue was even out there. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, the, the name was neat. It was called 17 Hats. It was fairly simple to use, but it was just like, okay, I thought there was only a sauna and there's auto and <laughs> Oh, nothing. Coming out with more. I oh yeah. Well, can, I mean, Canva can be your answer. I love Canva too. I think. I mean, it's yeah. so fun. My daughter loves Canva. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I I'm not really a I I want to be a graphic artist at heart, but I'm not. <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know. <laughs> um. Okay. What is your go-to snack during the day? Oh, I'm working on changing it, but it's, uh, it, it was these uh, soft, chewy granola bars with the chocolate chips. Mm-hmm. I like those, but I'm trying to steer away. So I'm trying to, th- the energy bites, I don't, uh, the oh, kind of like cookie dough energy bites or something that are mm-hmm. on the healthy side. Mm-hmm. I, I like those. Those are good. Oh, cool. Yeah, we all need them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, number three, what is your favorite adventure you've ever gone on? Probably say, I have to say my honeymoon in, um, Norway. Oh, that's cool. That is fun. Yeah. Well, we like we your, went for, yeah. What did you see or do or what was like the cool thing? Uh, we did a package tour, um, but where you could, uh, it wasn't guided for the most part. There was a few guided sections, but we did the five day Oslo to Bergen tour. Uh, I think there was another place in there somewhere, but we did that Um, really, really nice. We got to venture around in Oslo a little bit and um, Bergen and we found this neat little, (laughs) neat little hole in the wall, I think Italian restaurant or something and uh, the food was amazing there and um then we ventured uh i honestly cannot remember the name of the the one stop we had we stayed one night there and we uh ventured to try um uh what's the name of the basically reindeer burgers (laughs) I can't think of my god. <laughs> yeah. I, exciting. I, not the meat was not what I expected it to be. Um it was good, but t- really, to really, really different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um we also tried whale meat. Uh definitely I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's so cool, like how adventurous you are. Just like, yeah. oh yeah, give it a shot. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay, and then these last three questions we ask all 
like everybody because we really like to get like see the different perspectives on it. Um, first question is, what does is it balance right? <laughs> Sorry, I had somewhere. New year, new word. What does balance mean to you? Um. Oh geez. I kind of I kind of view it as you know like somebody carrying I can't think of the name of it but we're they're carrying the water pails and mm -hmm. so I kind of think of it that way of where it's balanced it's not tipping over or even you know lifting weights you have the same weight on each side so where things are pretty much aligned and everything's flowing smoothly and it's all kind of in a balance where it's not one side where you're not feeling like you're stressed out on one end or running around um, trying to get everything done or where everything's too perfect and something you feel like something is just going to go wrong but it just feels too perfect so we have a little mix of both <laughs> yeah um I love that explanation. Uh, the next one is we are huge supporters of small businesses. So do you have like a favorite small business you'd love to give a shout out to? It could be online, local, whatever. Uh, I have, well, I actually have two. Um, one is Lovely Creative. Um, she just recently launched her brand, brand design course hmm. and so i um it, she's she's amazing she's a bubbly spirit she's more outgoing than i am and she just she brings everything to life when when you talk to her she's just like uh, just just a bubbly person no <laughs> and then the uh yeah and the other one that i have is heller creative um alana she's kind of the same in in being a bubbly but she's more she she's more artistic, more colorful because she also does photography and she just has an eye for that. And she does the graphics. Um, she did my um, logo. Oh, cool. So yeah, so I, I really enjoy watching those two grow because I think we all started around the same time, maybe uh, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. So watching them grow has been amazing. Yeah. Um. And then our last question is, what is your favorite thing about you? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that question. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we saved it for last. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite thing about me? Uh, I'd say the ability to um, something that I've always had is the ability to listen and bring a different perspective. Um, like if somebody is kind of down and out and they're, they're telling me all their problems, I'm like, well, what if you kind of turn it and twist it and present it this way? You know, does that make you feel better? Uh, just kind of being the more, I don't know if you'd say optimistic, um, but just, providing a different light to people, you know, for people and their, with their uh, problems that they have. I love that. Awesome. That was a really, really beautiful answer for a question you didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> and we really, really love you being a part of our community. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've enjoyed I'm so it. grateful to have you. I've enjoyed it. Well, um, where can we find you on Instagram or anything of those sorts? For Instagram, you can find me at KRT Virtual Assistant, and it's all one, all all together. And same for Facebook, and then you can find me on my website at krtvirtualassistant.com. Perfect. Well, we're so glad that you took some time to be on here with us, and. Um, Give us a little more insight into like who you are and your whole journey. So thank you for joining us today, Katie. Oh, I've enjoyed it. Um, right now, we're just going to do our closing. Is that all right? Do you mind hanging out while we <laughs> close it out? All right. Um, sure. Well, thank all of you for joining us as well. Uh, we love that you keep coming back here every week. 
We hope that you are being inspired by these entrepreneurs that we're speaking with this month. And if you have any questions or desires about like how, like to, about what Katie was talking about, like how she's been getting her time better organized and having a healthy morning to herself and not feeling guilty about it and still getting everything done, Jess and I would love to help you out. So you can send an email to hello at inrawlife.com with the word podcast, and we will be able to help guide you in uh, whether it's that you join our most awesome ladies in the most awesome month of your life, or we have other uh, trainings, a lot of free trainings. Um, and we, we're just, our goal is to help give you the tools you need to improve your life um, and your every day. So reach out to us if you uh, want more information. And of course, we want to know what balance means to you. So you can also send a clip of whatever balance means to you. So we can feature it at the beginning of one of our episodes. You can send that as well to podcast at in or nope, sorry, at hello at in <laughs> Until next week, I hope that you, you know, take some nuggets from all of these interviews that we're doing. Listen to what all, you know, we're getting all these different perspectives on entrepreneurship and taking risks and doing, you know, going for what we want um, and see what, how you can apply that to your own life. And if you find that someone is asking you a question that's really, really hard to answer, you might be surprised by what you actually answer when you answer it. <laughs> Bye. All right. So now you can stop it and just uh, email that to us. Um, okay. your